Hey, welcome back to Papa's Custom Cars. Uh, we've got a new project in the shop. Um, vehicle that one of my neighbors bought has transmission issues and engine issues. Runs like garbage, and then the transmission, it's a 4L80 shifts, or 4L60, I don't remember which one it was. I'll have to look and see. But the transmission's also shifting hard. It has a check engine light and a really, really bad miss. Uh, don't know if it's a bad cylinder. Uh, at first, that's what we thought it might have been, but it seems to be a little bit different than that. So today, we're going to take on that and uh, see if we can't fix it. And if we can't fix it, then we'll figure out what we're going to do with it. And it's not a bad truck. It's almost identical to the white one I've got. So maybe with the two of them, we can come up with one complete, uh, one complete truck. So that's what we're going to work on today. Uh, so we want to diagnose what's going on with that to be a host of things. First thing on, on these uh, uh, 4L transmissions is if they're low in fluid, they shift hard. Uh, so we want to check that, make sure it's got adequate fluid in it. Uh, we want to run through, there's a code, uh, in, there's a code, so we want to read it with the computer, see what's going on with that. And uh, that's pretty much it. Maybe go through, clean up a little bit, uh, show you guys what's underneath the, the horrid, uh, horrid vehicle. Uh, as far as the body goes, it's had a it's got a little bit of body damage, but once again, you know, it's an older truck, so you're going to expect that. Uh, one of the nice things is LMC Trucks offers all the parts you can possibly imagine to completely rebuild one of these things, so that definitely makes it easy. So we're going to take a look at it, see what it's going to take to fix it, if it's uh, worth fixing, or if we just send it down the road uh, like uh, like the white one. The white one is up for sale right now. I'm asking 300 bucks for it. So mainly that's just the scrap price. It's another project I just don't have the time to get to. I've got enough of them here. I've got at least three, three cars, three to four cars in a row right now that I got to take care of. So the truck is kind of on the really back back burner. So I'm going to go ahead and, and I've pulled the parts out of it that I want the front drive set up. I'm going to probably keep the five speed, the mat, the, uh, hydraulic clutch and all that stuff out of it because I want to keep all that stuff because down the road you never know I may I may use it uh, depending upon this one I may end up going you know what let's just go ahead and put that stick in there uh, but this five speed has the older 4.3 type bell housing and everybody knows 4.3s are the exact same bolt pattern as the first and second gen small block Chevy so you could adapt this five speed into an older car with with pretty much ease. It is a hydraulic system, so that's a big plus uh, because they do make hydraulic setups for all the older cars to adapt to, uh, to hydraulics, so that makes it real easy. So it'll be another part we keep. But in the meantime, let's take a look at this truck, see what we can figure out with it, get her, uh, get her on the, <clears throat> excuse me, get, get the code reader out, see if we can figure out what's going on with it. So let's get off our patootie and get out there and, and uh, Hi, Bull. <laughs> My dogs are here laying on the ground. But anyway, we'll, we'll uh, go over here, take a look, see, and see if we can't figure out what's going on with this truck. So one of the first things I did before I got uh, in this truck is cleaned it because it was nasty, nasty. Um, the driver's seat still isn't clean. I didn't want to clean it until I got uh, most of this stuff taken care of. It uh, is a decent truck. Uh, has MFM, you got power windows, power locks. Uh, there's a there's a few features that it has that are kind of nice. The issue is it's pretty tore up. I mean, you got the headliner falling down and you know all kinds of stuff. But uh, I mean, it's a good start for someone who wants to uh, get into the get into the the business of of building a vehicle. Um, the question, the questionable part again, as I said, is the motor in this thing. It is giving, it is throwing a code. It sounds like hell, uh, and the transmission, same thing. It sounds like hell. Uh, other than that, I mean, it's loaded. It's got cruise control. It has tilt. Um, it has automatic transmission. It's a either a 4L60 or 4L80. I haven't uh, gone underneath there to look yet. It has AM/FM, but I mean, overall, it's the Silverado version. 
it uh, appears to have had a oil change. Oh, let's see. It's at 236,000 miles, and the last oil change was 205,000 miles. So it's been a few miles before it's last, since its last oil change. So that tells me that odds are that uh, this vehicle has been through hell, meaning that whoever had it didn't take care of it. Uh, has a Kenwood stereo in it with a little remote control and everything. Um, just saw that. Has AC. Uh, I did start the engine. It, like I said, it sounds horrible. So we're going to run a code on it. Or a, uh, we're going to run our meter on it and see what we end up with. So let's get to doing that. So the first thing we have to find is going to be our OBD port. This is a 93, 92, 93. So... It's going to be right there. So let's get hooked into it and see how much of the computer. So this is the uh, 90s version truck. So it's going to have the early OBD in it. So let's see what we can read from it and uh, try to diagnose what's going on. Give me a minute and I'll get that all set up. Our, Our OBD is right underneath here. I don't know how well, how well you can see it, but just a second to find it. It's right there, so we want to hook into that and uh, see what our code reader says. There's also a switch down here that is unknown. Maybe, maybe it's a kill switch or something of that nature. Um, but we'll have to cross that bridge when we get to it. And it does have a trailer hookup too, so first things first, let's get the get hooked up to the OBD. You can hear the stern squeaking from the belt and hear that. So it definitely needs a belt and there is a there is a miss and we have a service engine soon light. So let's go see if we can find an OBD reader that'll read this. Okay, so it's been a little while since I worked on an OBD-1. I mean, a really long time since I worked on an OBD-1. And you don't really need a code scanner. You just need a piece of wire. And I'll show you how to read the codes on an OBD-1. Easy enough to search on the internet for or to find the codes. There's all kinds of codes. But what you do is you jump the A and B first and second pins, turn the key on, not start it, and then it'll start flashing the uh, check engine light or the service engine light. And the number of blinks is the code. So if it blinks one and one, two, three, four, that's 14. And it'll blink those codes three times. When you first turn on the key, you're going to get a 12, which tells you that it's in diagnostic mode. It runs every code three times. So it'll, it'll run one and then one, two, three times, and that tells you that it is in the mode to go ahead and read the uh, read the codes, and then the next code is going to be, you know, your code. So let's go ahead and go over to the truck, and let's see what codes it gives us. So using the provided uh, diagnostic tool. So, yeah, save yourself some money. You don't need to go buy one. I was going to actually go online, buy a uh, cable that adapts to mine, but this is way cheaper. So you can pick up a code to go from OBD1 to OBD2 for your reader, but you, most of the time you're not going to get a real good accurate reading. So uh, this is definitely the cheaper way to do it. Mine will read OBD1 and OBD2 with the, with the adapter, just like most will, but uh, it's better just to do it this way and cheaper too. So let's go do that. Okay, so we're going to find, go back to finding our OBD, OBD connector which is right here, and you want to pin the first and the second one. So number one and number two, you just push your wire right in there, and you've got your, you've got your uh, let me find it real quick. You just put it in there, and you've got your one and two. Now we're going to come up, and we're going to go ahead and see if we get codes. And the way to know for sure is we'll get a, a 12 first before anything else. So. So we're going to turn the key on, and we're going to watch for the count the number of flashes. Of course, I'm videoing it, so I don't have to memorize them, but that's just the way it works. So here we go. So watch your check engine light. There's one, one, two. So that tells us it's service mode. It'll do that three times. One, 
One, two. There's two. One, one, two. There's number three. Now we'll get our code. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. So 35. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. It's 35 again. And I'll do it one more time. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, forty three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, forty three. So thirty five and forty three. One, two, three, four, or one, two, three, forty three. Thirty five and forty three so far. One, one, two. So now it's back to normal mode. So it's code 35 and code 43. So let's go find out what those are. And all we have to do is remove our wire to take it out of test mode and we're good to go. So what's nice about it is that's a very inexpensive code reader for you. So everybody with your OBD1 trucks and cars, that's how you test it. So we've got a code 35 and a code 43. So Let's go back into the garage where it's nice and air conditioned and figure out what those codes are. So now we need to find the OBD1 trouble codes. Pretty easy to do. Just throw in your internet search OBD or GM codes. And it comes right, the very first one that pops up is GM. So we have code 35 or 34. Thirty-four. Well, I'll look in a minute, but thirty-four is map sensor circuit error, signal low indicating high vacuum, which means it probably has a vacuum leak. And then the other one was code forty-three, which is a knock knock sensor error, and there would there would be a uh, an error because it is running like garbage. So, so looking through, can I, I basically just searched? Can I? Vacuum leak caused a hard shift on the 4L60. Uh, and it basically says the valve determines the load of the engine via a hose called the vacuum line. So it is run a little bit by the vacuum line. So if there is a leak, um, let's see, the only vacuum lines would be for the transfer shift case module on the 4x4. So uh, there are mixed things in here. Some of them say yes. Uh, some of them say no. So I think the, the first thing we need to do is find out where our mass vacuum leak is causing our code, and that'll probably tell us what's going on. At least we'll be able to, to locate that leak, uh, possibly fix the issue, and then see how the truck runs. And if the truck is running better, then we know that that's probably what's causing the issue uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with the system. So we're going to pop the hood. We're going to take a look, see in there, and see what we can find out and see if we can locate any vacuum leaks uh, to determine whether or not that's what the cause of our problem is. So let's go do that. Okay, so cursory looking through the engine. I don't see anything obvious. I've got that line's hooked up, that line's hooked up. It's never good when you see fluids in a, in a vehicle. Brakes look full. So you got brake fluid there. Another thing of brake fluid. That's never a good sign. And just looking through, it looks like nothing has really been messed with. I don't see anything obvious. But let's go ahead and check the transmission fluid because we know for sure that that will cause the transmission to act up.
Oh, where's the dipstick? There it is on this side. And we'll be able to see how ugly it is. Judging from that window sticker, it hasn't been changed in forever. Yeah, and you can tell by looking at it, it is just horrible black. So clearly this thing is definitely going to need an oil change. So now, we want to hunt for... I'm going to camera here. What's happening there? It's going to be up here. Okay. Let's check in the plug wires to make sure they're all on. Again, another thing that doesn't look like it's been changed in forever. Still see through it, but it ain't that good. We'll get our fuel injection. Looking to see if I see any obvious vacuum aches. They do not. Let's grab our heat gun and see if we can figure out which cylinder's misfiring to. So on that note, we're going to wrap it up for the weekend on the truck. Um, it does not sound like it is a rod knock. There is still an issue with the transmission. Transmission's full. Um, so I think that in that particular case, we're going to have to take a closer look at it. Uh, it's getting really hot outside. It's probably about, it's pushing over 90 now. So it's just miserable out there. I think next week we'll probably bring it into the garage here and, and uh, kind of go through it a lot more. Uh, I will have space next to the garage because we are moving that white truck out next week which will be nice. That'll give me a lot of space back there. I'll be able to move the Pinto forward. And then I'll be able to pull one of the cars in here over there um, while I work on that thing for a few days. It'll be nice working on it here in the garage. It's air conditioned in here, so it's really cool. Um, as opposed to working outside, I've gotten so used to working in here in the air conditioning that uh, that's just no fun anymore. So if you've run into this type of issue before, um, there is definitely a miss. Like I said, it's a code that uh, was a 34 or 35 and a code 43. Um, if you run into that on your uh, uh, OBD1 system, definitely shoot me a note. Uh, give me a comment. Let me know what it could possibly be uh, without me having to terrorize it. It's a lot easier if a bunch of you guys have already done it. So um, <clears throat> please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Um, based on what you found in your vehicle, your Chevy vehicle, this is the 88 to, I think it's 94, 95 OBD1 uh, system, and that's a code 34 and a code 43. It's either 34 or 35. 34, I think it was. But uh, once we've got it in here and it's a little cooler, uh, we'll definitely be able to work on it a lot more. I'll also get my step little step stool out so it's easier to stand up over the, over the engine compartment. Um, couldn't get anything done on the Nova this week, mainly because I'm still waiting for my seam sealer. I didn't know it was going to take a week and a half, two weeks to get here. But uh, that allows me a little bit more time to relax. Still getting over the, the, the tiredness, I guess you'd call, call it, from the week of COVID, I guess we'll call it. So anyway, with that, like, share, subscribe. Do leave some feedback if you've got an OBD1 system. That has run those two codes, and maybe you can uh, give me some insight to where I'm looking. You know, just a cursory view of it. All the hoses are hooked up, but it says there's a leak somewhere. So um, I don't know if it's in the fuel system or what have you, but if you've run across it, do let me know. And with that, like, share, subscribe, and I will see you next week.